it's me again. And today I am finishing up a project that I started a while back. It's kind of finishing time, so. It's time to uh, finish what I started and I figured it's Saturday. If you're anything like me, it's kind of a lazy day for you and you're uh, trying to pay pay your pendants for that and make up for it in the evening, afternoon. Hope everyone's doing well today. So I get a bunch of these carvings that are kind of, I don't know, 70, 80, sometimes less, sometimes more percent of the way there. And the goal is to bring those carvings into completion before the, uh, the, the shows, the fair. And uh, so this week, committing to finishing up the ones I've started before I do anything else. So that's the thought, at least. Just kind of get things where they ought to be and uh, finish what I started. Thank you, Sam. Excuse my noise, my tripod um, shake, I mean. Probably can't even hear the noise. Back, back again live here on uh, the tube, the YouTube, and I'm doing this to uh, show you a little bit about um, you know the behind the scenes, not the, not just the quick stuff, the stuff that uh, gets done in a matter of. Uh, you know, a few minutes or an hour, but the stuff that takes a lot longer, like this uh, finishing. So,
<laughs> hey Noah, thanks for commenting. He says good Sunday afternoon to y'all, so it's all you. Thank you, Alec, for doing these live stream shows. Appreciate it, Noah. Appreciate your appreciating it. Sam, love your carvings. I've been carving for 48 years and out. Carve me. Uh, and uh, I think there's this typo there. So thank you for your skills. And out carve me. Oh, doubt it. Thank you, Sam. I see what he meant. We'll put them in gold too. Noah asked. Well, you're referencing the uh, gold leaf that I did on the, a previous carve. And no, I probably won't. It's kind of an expensive ordeal. I guess I'll consider doing more of it. I just kind of want to see if that's something that people will be interested in. And I've got one project in mind that I'm going to uh, gold leaf later this evening. You know, I don't have it within reach, I don't think. Otherwise, I'd show it to you. Oh, here it is. I'm gonna put a gold leaf on this one. I did this in a previous live stream. Where is she? She's hiding, there you go. You can see her. And uh, I'm gonna gold leaf her. But at, the, at this point, um, you gotta kinda be particular about where that gold leaf goes because it's an expensive material, and uh, yeah, I guess I just I just want to try it out a little bit, dip my toes, get them wet, and see how people like it. And if it's uh, something that people dig, then I'll keep doing it. I guess even if people don't dig it, I'll probably occasionally still do it because I kind of think it's fun. Noah. How long does it normally take you to do one full carving? Asks Matthew. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have a typical time, you know, I mean, I'd say for these bark carvings, it can be, you know, you know, it can be as little as a couple of hours. It could be as much as, uh, gosh, I mean, I'm sure on a wood spirit, I'm sure I've spent 20 hours on a wood spirit before or less or more somewhere around there but typically i'm spending closer to that maybe you know two three four five hour mark you know i try to i try to make these things pretty pretty efficiently if i can carving tools set please can you elaborate please ladies are hard to do you make it look easy thanks sam appreciate it well, you know, there's a lot 
of uh, differences in male and female faces. So it's not, uh, it's not like you can just make a bunch of male carvings and then one day decide to do a female and use the same rules. You, you've got to uh, change up the rules a little bit and the shapes, but it's not all that much harder really once you figure it out. Carving tool set, please. You, would, would you, are you asking for me to create a carving tool set? I'm not sure what's happening. Or maybe you're asking about the fact that I don't currently have one for sale. Well, I'm shopping that, so I'm interested in partnering with folks because a lot of folks do ask me to curate a set. And I did do that with Stubai for a time. Um, I just can't keep up with the demand, so I'm, I'm actually looking for a company right now that'll do the distribution and maybe we'll have some sort of a partnership deal with. with. And uh, so if you know of anyone or have a tool company that uh, I'd like to check them out. If you have, you know, of course that would be an exceptional tool company. And so I'm willing to try it out. So be more than happy to. Where do you get the bark that you make these carvings? Uh, this one came from a trip out west. I go to Montana once or twice a year. Well, more like once a year. Uh, although I've been kind of, I've been kind of away from Montana for a while. I've just not been back. I've just had a lot going on. I got married, and it's a whole nother game. I'm just figuring out how to uh, how to be a how to be a good husband and figure out how to balance work life and keep track of everything, business and and all that good stuff. And so I'm trying to uh, navigate a lot. I'll probably get back out to Montana to get more bark soon because I'm running low on this good stuff. This is one of the last nice pieces I have. <coughs> I have your healthy knives. Sam Gentry, what do you mean by you have my healthy knives? Oh, you have healthy knives, you're saying. Because I don't have like a signature, so maybe it, I'm not sure what that means. Thank you. Yeah, healthy knives are awesome, aren't they? Do you know the company that a company that sells the bark? No, I don't. People ask me that all the time. I I, I find it. You know, I don't really. I have um, I don't really have a source that uh, people can buy from right now, sadly. Um, but if you're a supplier, I'd love. Uh, there's lots of business for you, if you can comment on these videos where you're uh, selling your bark, because people are always asking. People are always asking about bark. Uh, the only place, yeah, I mean, the, the the only place I've purchased bark from in the last w long while now is uh, from a friend of mine who who doesn't really, uh, or, you know, more of an acquaintance, not a close friend, but he doesn't sell it. Is the point to to the public because he's retired from doing that. So occasionally I'll reach out to him and see if he has any extra bark, but most of the time he's not really stocked up because he's just slowed down on collecting it. He's He's an older guy and he's just cutting down, cutting down on the traveling, the trips, and, the, and he's just, you know, he got so busy with bark. And uh, slowing down. What kind of, uh, Sam says that he's trying to carve a fish and watch me. What do you, what do you, what kind of a fish? Let's hear about it.
Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered getting a dog? I hear they bark. That's funny. Okay, I can't do both. Yeah. <laughs> Carbon efficiency there. I'm doing a series of fish. Okay, cool. Oh, my microphone's not cooperating. Can you guys hear me okay? Can you guys hear me all right? Will you let me know in the comments? Okay, good. Good, good. Thank you, thank you. I'm eventually going to take your online courses once I get the space set up. Do you recommend basswood for those limited on barkwood availability? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Basswood's great and it's available. Um, there are other woods as well. I've heard uh, good things about Jellyatone, which is, uh, or I don't know if I'm saying it right, Jellyatone. Um, really good things about that. Uh, I've heard really good things also, uh, well, I can say from personal experience that there's uh, a whole bunch of uh, species of pine that are good. You just have to find the right ones, uh, the right sources. But uh, surprisingly enough, there's some southern white pine that's really awesome to carve. and. Uh, I mean, just awesome to carve. If I had it, I'd just be carving, carving it all the time. But it's it's not around here quite as so quite so much. Um, I have a few pieces, but cottonwood bark is uh, harder to come by nowadays. So people are resorting to other woods, and I think butternut's a great option. Uh, basswood, of course, as we mentioned before. Cedars, the cedar family, are awesome. Juniper is great to carve. Good afternoon, Daryl. I appreciate the support in the last video. A very generous uh, donor by the name of John. Let me pull, I can't remember his last name. Let me pull it up. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's go to live streams. Carving a female face, was it? No, don't, I don't want to see that. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, let's see. Was, uh, Old Carving John is his handle. I'm not sure of his first name, but he was very generous, and uh, I appreciate that. I don't know if I mentioned him before, but I do appreciate the donation. He sent me 10 bucks, and it uh, makes it worthwhile. And I was saying in the last live stream, and I'll say it in this one again, I'm still kind of gauging uh, if the live streams are the best option for me uh, to capture this so 
uh, you know, if you guys, if it's, if it works out, I'll kind of, I'll see how this goes. If this, uh, people respond to it, I'll keep, I'll keep doing it. Um, if, uh, if it's not a, not a thing that people are enjoying, then I'll probably go elsewhere and try other things. So, um, you know, maybe another platform for live streaming potentially. Uh, so there's a possibility there. Uh, I certainly will keep making videos for YouTube. Uh, that's that. Sam has a lot of dark walnut. He's asking, I think he's bringing that up about uh, carving. Yeah, walnut's good to carve. It's a little hard, but it's good to carve. Uh, I might be able to get my hands on some fresh cotton bark. Do I have to let it dry out before I start carving it? Well, I don't know how you're getting your hands on fresh cottonwood bark because fresh cottonwood bark is, uh, I, I, I can't see how you get it off the tree. I've never had any, any luck with it coming off of the tree fresh. I mean, you really have to, that tree has to be dead before that bark is coming off. It's just, it's really tight against the, against the tree, so. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've never carved it green because again, I've never really had the ability to, yeah, would, you know, you can't really get it off of a living tree, in other words. Even a partially, there, there have been partially dead trees that I've come across and you can't really, you can't really take them up, take them apart because of the living, unless the, you know, you can get to the dead part. Excuse me. Uh, a, a golf course had a tree die. It's been dead for a few months. Ah, okay, yeah. In that case, you know, it should be fine to carve pretty soon. Uh, Daryl, I better check it out for you. You better send me that address, and then I can come down and look at it and make sure it's a good it's a good tree. Um, I'll have to rent a U-Haul for the to do the inspection. Uh, on the bark, you know, I don't want to, but I'll probably have to, so rent a U-Haul, or maybe just get, bring my truck, but it depends on how big the tree is, uh, to look at, it's going to take a lot of room in my vehicle to look at it and, if, and make sure it's a good tree. Uh. So just send the address and I'll come right over and steal your bar or give you a, an estimate of whether I think it's good or not. It was hit by uh, the uh, lightning and the owner wants to hire someone to carve the tree, but I wouldn't think the bark would be part of the larger carving. Yeah, there you go. That's a great opportunity. Peel the bark off the tree and then carve the wood. The, the, the heartwood, the actual you know wood of uh, cottonwood is pretty good to carve as well from what I hear. So they call it poor man's basswood. So I've done some carving in it, you know, some years ago, but it's hard for me to remember exactly how it turned out. I was just teasing you, Daryl. You can have the bark, buddy. I was just getting on your case, saying I would come steal your bark, but uh, it's nice of you. I mean, if you really want to, I'll take it. <laughs> oh. <clears throat>
it is just a beautiful day outside and uh, I've got plenty of carving projects in uh, indoors I can work on but I've also got this big carving that um, I have some work to do on it and uh, sadly I don't think I'll get to it today it just bums me out though I'll tell you because it is such a gorgeous day outside I mean it is I mean I can't what is it? 71 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's uh, obviously <laughs> um, <laughs> 160 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and it's uh, sunny. The sun's finally out. It's been cloudy for the past few days, and uh, I'm telling you that I would love to be outside. I could be carving this outside. I could. I could indeed, but. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm already set up in here. Hey, Greg. Daryl says, the golf course isn't far from you in Ithaca, Michigan. Where's Ithaca? Uh, hi, Liliana. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm just, uh, I'm just an English speaker and a piss poor Greek speaker, <laughs> barely, I shouldn't even say that, I'm not even a, I don't even rise to the level of, of a crappy Greek speaker, I barely even, I can barely even uh, remember how to order a meal in Greek, so. <clears throat> 127, 30 minutes south of Mount Pleasant, oh! Oh, 30, oh, 30 minutes south of, yeah, no, that's not too bad. my camera over here get another angle see if I can't put a couple more grooves in this and then call this live stream because I have to well I guess I could always just leave it on and get to the next piece I've got to work on a sailor a little bit I'll just show you the sailor I won't finish it on camera I'll show it to you in just a moment but Uh, the big carving, Sam's asking, what is the big carving I'm working on? And it's a big lady. Well, it's, a, it's actually just, a, it's probably life-sized head, maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe eight inches instead of nine inches um, long of the face. And uh, she's, I'm guessing she's got about 
three, three and a half feet of flowing hair and lots of stuff happening in that hair. So I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to weave together a bit of a story in her uh, hair. So to give her some, some, uh, I guess, context, if you will. Part of the idea is that it's a, you know, I, I did this mock-up, you know, last year in the summer for this piece that, um, you know, it was kind of one of the, my first carvings that happened to have a deeper kind of kind of meaning to me. And uh, it was really a lot of fun to, to do some background research for it. And it just kind of, it just came, it, the whole thing came out of uh, some interest I had in a uh, topic that uh, an author named Sam Harris writes about, and that's free will. And uh, it's also known as the determinism. It's also, determinism is kind of this idea that, you know, everything sort of is the way it is, and we can't really change it. You know, we're kind of, we have these kind of set of circumstances that we're beholden to, the chemicals in our brain that, that cause us to make decisions. And, uh, and it kind of uh, is an interesting philosophical conversation because it changes the way we punish criminals, the way we, you know, handle the, the judicial system, the way we kind of think about ourselves. And, and uh, anyway, I read this book, um, but the irony is when I bought the book, I ended up buying the wrong book. And the book that I bought instead was a book uh, from the, the perspective of uh, the opposite, that uh, we are uh, kind of in control of our lives. So it's a, a lot more like um, existentialism, I guess, would be, the, I don't know if that's the right term for it, but the idea that kind of we have, uh, we have the meaning that we, 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 um, we make in our lives. So we create the meaning in our lives and our uh, purposes are sort of a creative act. And so... I, brought, I bought this book that was, uh, it was an argument book against Tim Fer uh, Tim Fer uh, Sam uh, Harris's book, and it was titled, um, you know, uh, Who's Pulling Your Strings, uh, which is the name of, of Harris's book, but, it's, but in smaller letters beneath it, it said, you know, something like, why, you know, who's pulling your strings is wrong, an argument against... Sam Harris. So anyway, long story short, I ended up really liking the argument that the guy made in his book against Sam Harris. And then I ended up buying Sam Harris's book, reading that. And I thought, you know what? A really cool art piece would be one that kind of secretly deals with this conversation of, are we just subject to our chemical reactions? You know, the, the things that happen, you know, in our brains. Or are we truly able to make decisions on our own that, you know, can affect our lives? And, uh, you know, it, was it predetermined in a sense? Um, and so I called the, the piece Illusions of Freedom. And it sounds like I kind of side with Harris it, it, based on that title. But I, I don't necessarily do that. I don't side with Harris. Uh, but it's a uh, woman's hair. Of long flowing hair and, and woven in the woman's hair, woman's hair, as long with her, you know, of course, her face and everything is this um, bird. And it's kind of illusory. It's kind of like, uh, it almost looks like a figment of, of imagination because the bird is made up of hair and it's kind of flying away from her hair. It looks as though it's trying to escape. So I'm not going to try and describe the, the meaning behind that because it should be pretty obvious. The idea, well, I guess I will describe it. The uh, idea is that the bird is trying to get away. The, the, the bird is um, representative of freedom, right? Couldn't think of an object to represent freedom. And my neighbor came up with the idea of a bird, which I thought was cool. And so uh, I decided that the, the bird would be trying to escape and that there would be, a, you know, a sort of symbolism behind it. It, uh, it's like, well, is the bird reality or is it just, uh, is it just looking like, um, is it a bird? Is it freedom or is it, is it an illusion of freedom is the idea, right? So it was a fun idea and I've never really thought that much about a carving. And when I'm making a face like this, I'm just thinking about the forms and I'm thinking about making it more interesting. And, um, I let other people make the stories, you know, I'm not responsible for that. You know, I just kind of try to make it as interesting structurally as possible and let other people do that but I don't think it's wrong to have your own story you know I guarantee you the person that bought that carving
didn't even care. Didn't even ask about my story. They had their own story. And uh, that was good. And that was okay. So, and you know, part of the part of the project was uh, I think where it gets really interesting with that with that carving illusions of freedom is uh, I, I I brought it to a show as a demonstrative pe demonstration piece, and I let kids paint on it. And so <laughs> I don't know if there's any hidden meaning behind that, but in my eyes, it was sort of like a demonstration of the fact that uh, while we're over here pontificating if free will is uh, is a thing, these kids are are having loads of fun making the this carving their own thing, you know, deciding what it'll look like and adding colors and playing around. So there was a lot of freedom in that. Anyway, the reason I brought that up, geez, oh, Pete, I got off track. But the reason I bring it up was to say that this one, uh, this carving I told you about was a mock-up for the main piece, which is this big carving that I was working on. So now I'm working on the full-size piece. And uh, I'm going to bring that to the show as well. And I've got some other kind of symbols I'm throwing into the piece as well. I'm fun with it and just making it my own. And uh, I like that. I, I like having uh, having something that uh, I can kind of make my own and and have a little story to tell if someone cares to know. That's fun. So right now I'm using a V tool, by the way. Hollow out the nostrils. Sam.
You've taught me to be more loose when I'm carving. That's cool. That's kind of a, an interesting, interesting thing, huh? Tell me more about that. I taught you to be more loose. If you guys are watching this, uh, please feel free to like. Uh, actually, you know, liking this makes it possible to keep doing it, really. It's, it makes a bigger difference than you think. So if you're watching now and you can just hit the like button below, that makes a big difference. Thanks a lot. And uh, I'm going to get off here. And uh, I just wanted to hold true to my word and show you the little carving that I am going to be finishing up in a little bit. I may come back on here a little bit later and button some other things up, maybe do uh, some more live streaming, but uh, if nothing else, I'll be back on in this coming week. So see you guys and uh, have a good one.